the large green ones, and the intermediate orange ones. Now, over time, as a result of what we discussed earlier, we're going to see the following arrangement take place. So because those large proteins will have a smaller velocity, smaller rate of movement as a result of the increase in the drag force in the coefficient f, what, me, uh, what that means is these green proteins will be found higher up as compared to our intermediate orange proteins, which will be somewhere in the middle. And those very tiny proteins, the purple ones, will find it easier to move along these channels and pores because of its physical size, because of that smaller drag force. And so over time, we basically see three different bands form. At the top, we have the green band somewhere in the middle or somewhere on, on the bottom, we have this purple band and somewhere in the middle, we have our orange band. So this band is the collection of these green proteins. This band is the collection of these, these intermediate proteins. And this band is a collection of these very tiny proteins. And although each and every individual protein will follow its own unique pathway through these channels and, 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 uh, and pores because their rate will be exactly the same. So for any given protein that is of equal size because their rate will be the same, they will end up at the same exact location along our gel. So we have the large proteins, intermediate, and the small proteins. Now the final question is, what is the difference between gel electrophoresis and gel filtration chromatography? Because both of these techniques do the same exact thing. They basically separate the proteins based on size. But what's the major difference between these two methods? Well, in gel electrophoresis, all of these proteins in the mixture are forced to move through the porous gel. But in the case of gel, filtration chromatography, only the small proteins are actually forced to move through the beads that are composed of that porous gel. In gel filtration chromatography, the large proteins are not forced to move through the porous beads. Instead, they can simply travel through the space around the beads. And because of that, in gel filtration chromatography, it's the larger protein that makes its way down to the column first because it doesn't experience a large drag force like the small molecules that do travel through the beads do. And so that is the major difference between these two techniques. In gel electrophoresis, all the molecules have to move through the porous gel and so they all feel the drag force, but in gel filtration chromatography, it's only the small molecules that can fit into those gel beads and so they feel a uh, drag force, but the larger proteins move through the space around the beads and so they don't feel a force a drag force like the small molecules do. And that's exactly why these concepts are basically reversed. In gel electrophoresis, the large molecules remain at the top, but in gel filtration chromatography, the large molecules go to the bottom, but the small ones remain at the top.